Hi, this is Dr. Kat Fleece from Central New Mexico Community College. In this video C of the endocrine system, we're really going to focus on the receptors of hormones and also what kinds of responses are triggered in the target cells. How a target cell responds to the binding of a hormone to receptors on the target cell depends on a variety of things. Clearly, how much hormone is present in the blood or the lymph or right in the bodily fluid. Also, how good is the fit between the hormone and the receptor? So how good is the fit? And then, of course, how many receptors are present on the target cell? Now, receptors can actually go increase in number or decrease in number. So we're going to take a look at that in, in one of the following slides. We'll talk about the upregulation and downregulation of receptors. And it gets even more complicated because one and the same hormone, if it binds to target cell A, it might, let's say we have hormone X here, if it binds to target cell A, it's going to create response one, let's say. But if that same hormone binds to target cell B, which is going to have the exact same receptors, otherwise this hormone couldn't uh, fit into the receptor, we, see, we might see response two, a whole different response. So what it says here is the response depends on both the hormone and the target cell. So you can't predict very easily uh, what a hormone is going to do unless you are also familiar with where the target is located. So if we continue to focus more on these hormone receptors, as I just mentioned, one and the same receptor in different locations that is on different target cells may trigger very different responses. We already discussed that on the previous slides. A cell, a target cell, can have receptors for either one or for many different hormones. So one cell, let's say we draw one cell here, it may have a receptor for a hormone that fits in there, or it might have a hormone, a receptor for a hormone that fits in here, or it might have a receptor for a hormone that fits in here. So these are three different receptors on one and the same cell, and these three receptors bind different hormones. Of course, it probably doesn't come to a, a surprise that receptors for one and the same hormone are often going to be located on many different cells, right? Or, um, or sometimes we see that they are very limited to a small number of specialized cells. Thyroid hormone, uh, and there's two different kinds of thyroid hormone as we learn, they can, these two hormones can act on many, many different tissue types. Thyroid hormone is one of these hormones that in influences your metabolic rate and therefore can bind to many, many, many different cell types across the body. So how many receptors that are present on a cell respond to the binding of a hormone determines the cell's sensitivity to that hormone. So the more hormones bind to more receptors on a cell, clearly the more sensitive the cell is, and therefore we're going to have a stronger cellular response. Earlier I mentioned that receptors for hormones are quite dynamic. And so what that means is that a cell can grow more or less receptors. Remember, these rep receptors are proteins, so it's just a matter of protein synthesis to make more of these receptors. Or uh, the cell can choose to take these receptors, these protein receptors apart into uh, individual amino acids and recreate either uh, a whole new molecule, a whole new protein with that, or a whole new receptor. So. When we take a look at what we call up and down regulation, 
we mean the following. So we're looking at what kind of a response we might see in a cell to rising levels of a hormone. So rising levels of a hormone can cause either upregulation or downregulation. In the case of upregulation, as the hormone goes up in level, we also see that the number of receptors increases and therefore the response by the cell increases. But in downregulation, we see that again in response to increasing levels of the hormone, this time the number of receptors decreases and that's going to reduce the cellular activity. So we see this, for instance, in the female, where estrogen levels will go through different levels. Sometimes estrogen levels are lower in a, in a woman's cycle and, and higher and very high at, at different points in her menstrual cycle. And that these different levels are going to dictate whether there will be more receptors or less receptors um, to allow for an increased cellular response or a decreased cellular response. So listen for that when we get to the female reproduct reproductive system. There's also great variability in the response time amongst hormones. For instance, if we take a look at steroids, it takes a while before steroids actually show a response. So they have a lengthy initiation time of their response. And we'll see why that is. It has to do with the mechanism they depend on in order to create a response. The length of a response varies tremendously from hormone to hormone. It can be really short. It can be quite lengthy as in hours, maybe even days. And then often, even after the hormone is removed from the receptor, we see a, a continuation of the response. And again, this will become clearer in when we study the next video uh, where we focus on the mechanisms of action of the hormones. Hormones are characterized by something we call a half-life. We, we talk about half-lives of medications as well, and it really refers just to the amount of time it takes for half of the concentration of that medication or that hormone um, to be removed from the blood, either by uh, the hormone being taken apart or liter literally being removed from the blood by, let's say, the liver. Now, because steroids are much more complex, it takes much longer for them to be removed, so they have a longer half-life half compared to the amine uh, or the amino acid-based hormones. Half-lives, therefore, of hormones are going to give us some idea of how fast the hormones are released into the blood and also how fast they are inactivated or removed from the blood. So as I said, some are degraded, in the blood, typically by enzymes or removed by the liver or even the kidneys.